What up YouTube? This is Steven and welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to talk about the, well, what I perceive as the erasure of dark-skinned children in advertisement. Where I'm coming from with this video is oftentimes when you see like the younger children in advertisements and ads, adverts, you know, whatever you want to call it, it seemed like lately they've been sort of getting lighter. I may be reading too much into this, perhaps. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe. All right. If I am, let me know. Set me straight. All right. <clears throat> but this is something that I kind of, you know, been noticing a little bit here and there, you know, like a lot of times they will use, especially for the young girls, but they're even doing this for the young younger males as well for young boys um they'll use when they want like a black child they'll you know tend to put like a lighter skinned child in the ad you know like oh you know uh pampers for um your toddler you know um here's a example i guess i can show you you know i mean look at this and also the Photoshop too. You know, just an example, right? Um, and as well, there's other examples that I can't think of at the moment, but that's a big example, right? Um, but younger children in advertisement, particularly younger black children, they seem to maybe want to gravitate, you know, the um, companies and the businesses seem to want to gravitate a little bit more lately, especially towards the lighter skinned children, right? Why do you think that is? If you think that is. Um, if you don't think that is, then, you know, leave a comment and let me know and just say, hey, this isn't this because of this. All right. <clears throat> but I guess perhaps maybe they are more like palatable, like Perhaps they can appeal to like a multi-range audience, not just black people, you know? Since they do perhaps have sort of an ambiguous look to them, perhaps they can appeal to like, say, Hispanic people, or um, even like, you know, Asian or white people, you know? As well as black people. Perhaps maybe that's one reason why they would gravitate towards the uh, lighter skin children when it comes to their advertisements because <clears throat> um, they want of course they want as many people as possible to purchase this item so that would be one reason right um, another reason is maybe because they may feel that it's a better look for the company or a better look for the product when it has this particular child like maybe this lighter skinned child on the cover versus this darker skinned child and if it is a darker skinned child, they may kind of play with the coloring of the photo a little bit and, you know, Photoshop and then maybe lighten the skin. And of course, we've seen this done with adults, particularly women, when it comes to, um, you know, black women, when it comes to like being on magazine covers um, for, you know, white publications, like, <clears throat> as well as white advertisements, like, you know, Beyonce and L'Oreal, I think they lighten her skin, uh, Gabourey Sidibe. And I forget the magazine, but they lighten her skin up some too. Um, Kerry Washington, they did that. Um, they lighten her skin up on a cover too. So this, it's not just the children, but it's also um, some adults too. But I see it when it's adults, it tends to happen more so with the women. While when it's children, it seems to happen kind of like more or less with both genders, right? <clears throat> And I'm not sure why it is that way with the women when they're adults, though. Um, I guess because YouTube user Tatiana Mercedes again. <laughs> Shout out to her. She has mentioned something saying to the, something to the extent of saying like becoming an adult as a woman of color, especially a black woman, often means kind of like assimilating and you know, assimilating into whiteness and becoming whiter, you know? Like, oftentimes when you become an adult, your hair may become straighter. The makeup you wear may kind of, like, lighten up your skin. 
like kind of like doing these things to sort of like I guess whitewash the way you look right and that signifying like you know becoming a woman you know because <clears throat> oftentimes when it comes to the natural hair like a lot of girls like they lose not lose their natural hair but they change their natural hair once they hit a certain age right like they start putting in you know straightening it or like perming it right um but let's get back to the children right because this is really more so about the children right um so when it comes to the children um i think the children are more palatable you know they're more marketable when they're lighter right and as well, you know, we do hear that kind of, that, oh, like some people say, oh, I want light-skinned babies with good hair. We do hear that, you know. Um, one way, in one variation or another, we hear something to that extent, right? Like that um, chick from WWE, uh, Cameron, has said something like that very recently, right? And as well, even if people don't say it, sometimes they can, you know, if they don't verbalize it, sometimes they can say it when it comes to their actions. Like, say, Kanye West, right? He never said it, but his actions sort of said, well, he don't want a black woman to have his children, right? Um, he, don't want to, he don't want black women wearing his clothes, so I'm pretty sure he don't want black women having his children. You know, <laughs> let's keep it real. <clears throat> um. And also, um, I saw on a television show, y'all remember the Tyra Banks show back when she had a talk show? Uh, yeah, she should have kept that show going. I think that was the, probably the one of the better show for her to keep going. Um, but she did a show about like these, this, these group of women, particularly like darker skinned women who were bleaching their skin. And she just um, had a show about them and talking with them. And I know one woman had mentioned something to the extent of like, oh, you know, I wouldn't have, I'm not going to go through life with a dark-skinned baby on my, on my arms, or in my arms. <clears throat> and she was like, you know, I see how dark-skinned babies are treated in the nurseries and, um, you know, in daycare. And she had a child with an Asian man to make sure that her child came out lighter, right? <clears throat> so people have these thoughts they may not verbalize these thoughts but they have these thoughts right i will say oftentimes people like we know what to say and what not to say usually when it comes to you know our interactions with people like we're not going to say oh you know we kind of know like if we say like oh you know i want um uh, light skin babes with good hair if we say that, we know that that's not going to be a good look, right? So we won't, you know, we as a community or group of people won't say it. Uh, but some people who want that will just go ahead and do it, right? And, you know, I know there's some people who just happen, that's just where, where it happened, right? There wasn't a calculated effort. It, it just happened, right? They just found someone they like and they went for it, you know? Uh, and that happens, you know? Not every person who has light-skinned babies who may not reflect their features or self-hating. They just, you know, <clears throat> it's not always like that. I'll say that. It's not always like that, right? But there is a segment that it is like that, right? And some people could say, like, well, their personal experiences may trigger them to be like that, Right? Especially when it comes to like women, right? They're like, well, I don't want my child to have to go through life, you know, the life that I went through as, you know, going through the struggles of being a dark skinned woman in and outside of the community, right? So they may want to maybe try and get, make sure that their child comes out a little lighter, maybe have a child with someone who is perhaps of another race or maybe someone who is of the same race, but has lighter skin that happens too and it's not just the dark-skinned women dark-skinned men be doing it too as quiet as it's kept because there's a lot of dark-skinned men do be having some biracial kids some light-skinned kids i mean they be snatching up the light-skinned women you know and they're gonna be having some 
some kids who are lighter skin a lot of the times, right? <clears throat> and that's not necessarily like them. It's not always self-hate, like I said, it's not. But there is a segment <clears throat> where it is like some type of an issue there. And as well, I think it's kind of like something that like we as maybe like lighter skin, like black slash African American people are sort of like ignorant to like the struggles of perhaps like darker skin African Americans slash black people. Because a lot of the times I'm like, oh, wow, you know, I never knew that, you know, you felt that way or I never knew that that was an issue, you know. Um, so, you know, sometimes because of the position that you're in seemingly um you know a position of privilege in some cases it does allow you to be ignorant right versus when you're not in the privileged position you can't really afford to be ignorant you don't have that luxury right because it's like right in your face and you can't deny it you know <clears throat> um. But I think when it comes to adult males, when it comes to advertisements, they seem to gravitate towards darker skinned men for their advertisements. I think that has to do with, well, darker skinned men probably, probably are the bigger group of the two, of course, when it comes to lighter skinned men versus dark skinned men. But also, I think that they tend to not want to be like, let me, I got to be careful how I phrase this. But basically, um, in order to appeal to them, you have to have someone who looks like them, right? But versus to appeal to black women, you don't necessarily have to have a black woman who, quote unquote, looks like a monoracial black woman. And that there's a lot of reasons why that is right um i think that black women as in general are used are more used to lighter skinned women portraying them like you know representing them um and i think some dark skinned women may not want to admit this but i think on some level, I think they may want them to represent them. Not all dark-skinned women, but some dark-skinned women do seem to maybe perhaps live vicariously through lighter-skinned women at times and perhaps want them to represent them so they can continue to live vicariously through them. Um, and as well, I think darker-skinned men help perpetuate this. Like I said, they do help perpetuate colorism you know especially darker skinned men I should say help perpetuate this colorism thing because they also put them put lighter skinned women in certain positions too whether you know music videos movies television shows etc you know in life you know in general um, so you, and then also when dark skinned women do call it out, they get shamed for calling it out and wanting like a black women who look like them. So that plays a part in it too. So, you know, oftentimes when black women want to voice their frustrations about having people who don't look like them in advertisements and movies, televisions, etc. in the media, they get shamed by the community. Like, for one, you have light skinned women but even more, you have dark-skinned men jumping into the argument and shaming the dark-skinned woman when really it's like, that's really messed up because it's like, you as a dark-skinned man can't relate at all and see where this dark-skinned woman is coming from at all. Where, you know, you know, no type of sympathy for her and the struggle she's going through. Yeah, that's, that is fucked up, you know. And I can understand some darker skinned women feeling resentful about that and feeling angry about that. And I can't, like, those feelings are valid. I can't deny them. You know, if it was happening to me or if it was happening to dark skinned men, they would be feeling the same way. In fact, when it does happen, they speak up. And the thing is, 
darker skinned women tend to support them when they feel like they are being portrayed in a certain way. Like, for instance, the Tyler Perry movies, right? His first few movies, right? He had that theme of like angry, violent, dark skinned men, you know, attacking black women, right? And being abusive. And then when it comes to like the good black man who, you know, the um, abused black woman runs to, it's like a lighter skinned man, right? That was like the theme in like at least three of his movies. Like, but folks called it out and Tyler Perry changed it. But I didn't hear dark skinned women saying anything to native about that. Like, wasn't saying like, oh, you know, you're just bitter. You're just jealous. You know, what are you angry about? This is why no one likes you. No, they don't say that. I, if they, I really, if they do, it, it's a, it's an extreme minority if they do, right? The darker skinned woman supports the darker skinned man when it comes to the colorism thing. When he feels like his position is being threatened by a lighter skinned man, they support him. But that's the thing too with the women. Like I said before in that um, video I did about um, uh, Cameron from the WWE, you got to support people who support you. If they ain't supporting you, do not support them, right? If they can't come to bat for you when you're going through your struggles, why should you go to bat for them, right? I mean, I can, I, on one hand, I, you know, I have heard that, you know, women, you know, black women tend to feel sort of a, um, a strong connection because of like, um, you know, pregnancy and child rearing, right? That is true. But some of these women don't even have kids and they're doing this. Some, you know, <clears throat> don't even have kids and they're still having this, you know, blind loyalty, you know, this ride or die type thing. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I do think there are some as an end, at least on the individual level, there are some people who are worthy of that and who deserve that because they're just like really great men, right? But not everyone deserves your loyalty and your ride or dieness, you know. And that goes for just across the board in general. Anybody, man or woman, not everyone deserves, you know, your blind loyalty. You know, your loyalty to a faultness type loyalty. They don't. <clears throat> but in regards to this situation, you know, again, like to the dark skinned black women, like sometimes you just need to just sit back <laughs> and just let things happen how they may happen instead of jumping in and caping for these dark skinned niggas, you know. <clears throat> um, shoot but i feel like if they do support you then yes cape for them you know support your man if he supports you but if he don't then don't don't do that don't because what you getting out of it that's the thing like what are, what do you get out of it because a lot of times when it like for instance you know black women came to bat for um what's that dude name um Oh, yeah. And by the way, I know I'm kind of like totally off topic, but that's the thing. This sort of like the kids have turned into the adults now, you know. But that guy, um, O.J. Simpson, right? Black women were in the, on the jury and they didn't do anything. You know, they didn't, you know, put him in jail, right? They found him not guilty. What this dude, what this fool go and do? He still going out there and chasing white women. Ain't giving black women the time of day since. Right? Again, support the folks who support you. Now, that situation may be different because the evidence may have pointed to him being innocent. Right? You know, but still. An example of that, right? <clears throat> um, you know, like say Tyrese, for instance. Black women have supported Tyrese for years, you know, Tay Diggs as well. Um, 
but it seems like a lot of these dudes seem to not want to have anything to do with like black women or at least a certain a certain shade of black woman but they supporting them that's the thing like what you getting out of this though and some people may be like well you know you got entertainment <laughs> but you know that's nice but sometimes you expect more from certain people right so long story short you gotta, you gotta support the folks who support you if they don't support you you don't support them and that again that goes for everybody you know you know like for me I shouldn't be like I'm not gonna be around supporting these like culture vultures when these culture vultures can't speak up on black issues that they're white folks as well as there's there's brown culture vultures too but the white ones especially create so you can't speak up on an issue you know you can't tweet black lives matter I know all lives matter but black lives matter right then you're not getting my support see you see like it seems like we're more clear-cut when it comes to that all right but when it comes to us it seems like we we not as it gets a little blurry the lines get a little blurry then it's like well you know I don't want to be seen as being bitter angry and negative you know understandable you know you don't want people to view you in a negative light of course but okay but what's the question why would she be bitter angry and jealous but why what reason would she have do you think there are legitimate reasons or do you think that she's just you know being unreasonable um, but let me see if I can bring this back to the topic at hand uh, the topic of this video <laughs> um, which is children black children especially in advertisement Um, and I feel like ultimately it seems like there is an erasure alright there's the beginning of an erasure of I guess darker skinned children when it comes to advertisement which could possibly be detrimental because if you don't have people who look like you in the media that may create somewhat of a negative sense of self or create issues within this yourself because you may feel like you can't relate to these people thus you can't see yourself as like say certain professions like oh a doctor or a lawyer because that's the thing too like oftentimes when you see like black people especially like black men in the media it's like an athlete or a rapper you know versus when you see white men in the media you will see them as like everything under the sun there will be a doctor a lawyer, a gangster, a rapper as well, an athlete, a superhero, uh, a supervillain, a scientist, um, <laughs> a college professor, a like guru. Like you see how many, so many different variations. <clears throat> And the same when it comes to like you know black women versus white women you will see white women as being like you know all these different types of princesses you know they will get to be this um a superwoman you know a superhero woman even though women aren't that big in the superhero genre they when it comes time for the woman to be a superhero you will see them being superheroes you know being you know fashionable classy posh housewives um also being you know the business woman you know the lawyer the doctor um, you know the one who snags the rich man except in all these different variations that we often don't see you know us being those people so the media does play a role in this you know so I guess that's part of the reason why I'm doing this video where I think it's something to be aware of how the media does play a role in sort of like what your aspirations are as well as to an extent even self-esteem you know I mean when I 
personally, in my personal experience, okay, I'm going to set it, set it up and give a disclaimer before I go into this. Um, <clears throat> you know, when I see black men in the media, that is great. That is awesome. No matter the shade. I'm just like, oh, wow. That is awesome to see a black man doing something positive, right? But when I see a black man who looks like me, especially like a lighter, like a light skinned black man in the media, you know, getting some media coverage, it's really like it's even better. You know, it's like, wow, you know, I can relate, like, especially to that guy, right? He's black, but he's black like me, right? As well, he may be able to relate to me and my, and we may be able to have like relate on like um you know personal experiences because our personal experiences may be more in line with each other versus say like the personal experiences of a, like a darker skinned man versus lighter skinned man right um and i think that's the way that you know some darker skinned women feel when they finally get to see them you know women who look like them in the media you know it's not that they're like so you know negative and nasty and you know have um you know, shadiness towards lighter skinned women. They just want to see women who look a little, see more representation of women who look like them, right? Um, and while, you know, lighter skinned men do get media representation, you know, we are there, but we're not like concentrated on, like we're not the focus, that's the thing. Um, and there's so many reasons why that is, but that that's the thing. We're not really the focus. Um, darker skinned men are. And I don't really have a, I have like a, maybe a slight issue, but it's not really a big issue because I know like darker skinned men are the majority, so it should be that way, you know? But it's not that way when it comes to darker skinned women because they're the majority, but it seems to be the focus, the focus for them is on light skinned women though, you know? Which I don't think is fair because I think it needs to be even across the board. Um, <clears throat> but, um, I think, you know, there are lighter skinned men in the media, of course, you know, but I think for the lighter skinned men, like we do well, but we kind of like low key, you know, <laughs> like, cause we don't tend to get focused on, but like we're there, we don't, but we don't tend to get focused on. So we're a bit more low key. We're kind of like, you know the dark horses of the black community <laughs> the irony i know but yeah <laughs> like we kind of like we're doing well but folks kind of don't notice us until we probably like hit a certain status you know then you notice us right we come out of nowhere you know <laughs> um <clears throat> but yeah and i think it's similar when it comes to darker skinned women as well um, but yeah i think i've said all I have to say for the moment. I really didn't mean for this video to go. <laughs> I always say that. But I really didn't. I go in these videos thinking I'm going to be talking for like five or ten minutes. But I come, like, I just so many things lead into the next topic, though. That's the thing. <laughs> so, thanks for staying with me if you did. Thank you very much. It's very appreciated. So, thanks a lot for watching. Feel free to comment. Feel free to subscribe. Thumbs up. I definitely appreciate the subscriptions. Thanks a lot for watching. Adios and goodbye for now.